Good morning, David Johnson here at the Functional Movement Training Centre. The purpose of this video is really to give you a quick overview of how we can incorporate movement proficiency combined with um, functional movements um, to build musculoskeletal health and metabolic health and um, ultimately build functional capacity, which I think is a alternative way and an alternative metric of health. And I think it's a very uh, superior metric of health, functional capacity, because functional capacity means what can you do in life? And if you can do lots of things in life, um, then all of the other metrics that we commonly measure to determine health will be trending in the right direction. Um, so regardless of whether you're in a setting like this, which is, qu uh, which is clearly um, uh, designed to allow people to build a very high level of capacity and athleticism, or whether you are in your lounge room at home and you have simple objects like a backpack um, and some water bottles, and I just pinched a few things out of my own house, you know, some something with a little bit of weight that's nice and compact. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, to allow your body to um, uh, gain from the expression in your daily life activities from uh, functional movement and movement proficiency. So the key um, elements that I want to just go through uh, that allow you to develop the, your whole body's musculoskeletal health is really pushing movements, pulling movements, uh, squatting movements and hinging movements. And then once you've got those under control, then you can sort of mix them all up um, and you can create uh, little drills and um, short little um, sessions of functional movement training. And um, I think uh, you'll get a lot of enjoyment and a lot of health benefits out of that type of approach to um, your musculoskeletal and metabolic health. So I'm going to just go from uh, a more athletic um, a demonstration to an equivalent demonstration if you're just starting to think about um, gaining uh, musculoskeletal health and you've never you've never done any um, uh, physical training per se in your life. So if you're just stepping into this um, arena for the very first time, the same principles will apply. And you'll see similarities in the movement because they are the same movement, they're just that relatively different levels of intensity. So firstly, we're going to do a push movement. So with an athlete, so if you've already had done a lot of sport in your life and you have a relatively high level of capacity and you're just trying to maintain uh, or progress in your understanding of movement proficiency and, and functional movements, a, a, a push movement may be something, as, uh, something like a, a barbell push, uh, a barbell press. Okay, so from this position, one, two, okay, so what's the equivalent of that? Now, you will notice that I'll start to get a little bit breathless with some of these activities because they are functional movements. One of the characteristics of a functional movement is it is intense, and so therefore a consequence of intensity is breathlessness. So what could you do? Um, at home, a couple of drink bottles, okay, straight in front, elbows in front, shoulders high, one, two, okay, fill them up with some water, leave them empty, whatever it may be. Let's think about um, the pulling movement, so a very simple uh, movement for pulling would be uh, for an athlete would be a pull up, okay, so if you're in a gymnasium setting, you can do a strict pull up, okay? Um, if you've got access to the barbell, you can do pulls such as bent over rows, okay? Um, and if you are stepping into it for the first time, what could you do to simulate a pulling movement? You could do a cheap $5 band and you could do various types of pulling movements, okay? Pulling movements like that, okay? And um, various other types of pulling.
pulling movements. Okay, other side. All right, and you can do lots and lots of different types of uh, movement tasks with the resistance of a rubber band. Um, you can also use your water bottles again, and you can do bent over rows with water bottles. Okay, now it's very important that when you start out that you do try to get someone teaching you how to get into the positions to do the movement correctly and utilize the correct muscles. Um, because as you know from the previous slides, functional movements are very much um, characterized by uh, quarter extremity delivery of the power, um, compound movement, all the mu a lot of muscles working at once. So like when I did that pull up, it wasn't just my my shoulders and my back muscles doing the work. It was every part of my body engaged uh, and remaining um, active uh, to do the movement. So okay. now um, squatting movements. Okay, we want to be able to allow our body to move through these wide range of motions. That's why we have joints. That's why we have a ball and socket joint because we want to allow our body to move through wide ranges of motion, and that's one of the characteristics of a functional movement. So we can do in a in the gym setting we can do what's called a front squat okay. or the barbell might be on our in our back position and we'll do a back squat okay and whether the barbell's in the front position or the back back position will activate slightly different parts of the musculature and of course, an even more challenging uh, type of movement is called the overhead squat. Okay, so what are you going to do if you don't have that potential um, or that capacity yet? You're going to just do simple air squats. Okay, again, you need someone to teach you how to do the movement correctly. Um, and sometimes it's very useful to have uh, a target to guide your range of motion. Okay, so we might use a kitchen chair or a, or a, um, uh, a, a ledge, and we just we just do our squats to a target. Stand up tall sit down okay everyone can do this there is no limit there is no restriction on anyone being able to do simple body weight squats to target and then as you get more proficient you then go all right that's pretty easy i'm going to lower the target okay and that that becomes um easy too as your musculoskeletal system gets healthier as a consequence of doing this movement as default movement pattern so when you sit down to have dinner you do the exact same thing and then eventually you say i don't really need the box i can just do a really nice air squat without um, the need for the target as you're gaining capacity you then start to add in little loads okay so all right let's do that if the shoulders aren't up to that capacity you don't have to hold them in this position Hold them in this position, okay? And as you're getting even stronger, we go, rightio, let's put on a backpack. Everyone's got a backpack at home. You don't need to have anything fancy. Fill it up with some um, goods to add a little bit of weight to it. Start doing our air squats with a load and then progress. Okay. So, there's no reason why you can't continue to build capacity in a slow, progressive manner. Other little weights that you can use. So you can, you can use these weights and do what we call, normally we'd use a kettlebell or something like that to get really heavy loads. But this is absolutely perfect as you're starting out to do what we call um, goblet squats. Okay. So that's just squatting and then so the squatting really has the purpose of allowing you to get nice deep ranges of motion so that you can pick things up off the ground. It really loads heavily 
all of those muscles that stabilize the spine, the um, quadriceps muscles, the back muscles, the core, front core muscles, the glute muscles. Um, but then there's another movement that really isolates what's called the posterior kinetic chain, which runs from the back of the, uh, the lower limb up your back, up your thoracic spine into your cervical spine, and that kinetic chain ends up here in the top of your head, and hinging movements really activate that. Critically important, keeping the knees, um, limiting the knees driving forward because that deactivates the posterior chain, um, and pushing your hips back like some of those other videos that I've shown uh, in this talk, um, and maintaining that active position of the posterior kinetic chain. What's the classic movement for that in the athletic arena? It's called a good old deadlift. Tried and tested, proven to be an extremely powerful movement for developing that posterior kinetic chain health and power. And if you move, if you move your body well with the deadlift um, uh, technique, then you really never feel tight in your hamstrings. And there's never a need to stretch your hamstrings per se. Um, what is the equivalent of that outside of the gym setting? Again, we just come back to our simple, um, uh, simple implements that you can find around the home. Five dollars from your local shop, your local Rebel Sport or something. This is called the banded good morning. Okay, it's applying a little bit of resistance to the body, but again. Very simple. You don't need anything fancy. Okay, you don't need barbells. You don't need lots of heavy weights. And there's your banded uh, deadlift, or we call them good mornings, banded good mornings, because you're doing a good morning and bending over to kiss your beloved um, good morning. Okay, neutral spine position. Okay, that's what is critical. When you're doing all of these movements, and I'm sure I've made that quite clear throughout this uh, seminar and this talk, neutral spine position, which the broomstick helps us find. Okay, let's our hips move backwards from that center axis of our body, moving behind the, the uh, central axis. All right, so that's your that's your hinging, and of course, there's many other variations of hinging. Once we start to get proficient, we could say, Look, let's mix this up and create a little drill. And one really useful type of um, drill that we, we often do, we call them EMOMs, E-M-O-M, -M, which stands for every minute on the minute. And you just set, it, set your clock up, and in one minute you might do um, a couple of front squats. One, two... Okay, you set your clock up, you might do two pull-ups. One, two. Okay, you might then do a, a two deadlifts. One, two. That's your work for the minute. You then, you then look at the clock and you go, all right, I've got 30 seconds rest now. So you rest for 30 seconds. As soon as the minute is up, you then go back into your two um, front squats, your two pull-ups, your two deadlifts, and then you rest again. So you can continue those EMOMs for five to ten minutes, and um, uh, I can promise you that by the end of that ten minutes, even though you might have only done 30 seconds of, of uh, work uh, each minute, you will be absolutely puffing, and you can probably hear me puffing now just from demonstrating that to you. And what do we do if we don't have these fancy uh, pieces of, of gym equipment, we could do, we could make up our EMOM with uh, a couple of chairs on one end and a goblet on that end and we might just do this type of activity. We might go, okay, let's do three sit to stands. One, two, Three, pop them down with good biomechanics. We don't round our back when we pick. We walk to the other side. All right, now we're going to do our 
um, our, our squat and press. One, two, three. We put that down. We come to our band and we do our pulling movement. One, two, three. And we repeat that and we might try to do that five to ten times. Again, that might take us um, five to ten minutes. Um, but I can promise you that you're going to be feeling that and in that 10 minutes you have um, created a level of intensity that is unparalleled when you compare that to going for a half hour walk around the block or a, a, a one hour ride or a long slow swim that is not driving intensity it's not allowing your body to open and close it's not using every muscle in your body every joint in your body you know, the compound elements of functional movement um, and as a consequence of that you're not getting the neurohormonal secretion and without the neurohormonal secretion there is no physiological or there, or there is at least a lesser physiological stimulus to healing chronic disease, um, metabolic disease, and musculoskeletal disease. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, uh, a lot in that little demonstration, um, and uh, but it's uh, anyone and everyone who can incorporate uh, movement proficiency and functional movements into their everyday life activities and it doesn't take long. All the best.